Good morning. Good morning. We have a few announcements we would like to uh, bring you before we get started with our service. Uh, can't see here. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to have the chili cook-off on Wednesday night uh, at 7 o'clock. That's chili and soup cook-off. If Jerry's going to tell you a little bit about that in just a second. Uh, we'll have games around 9.15 and communion service, midnight communion at 11.15 here so that we can bring in the new year as a family. Uh, on, there's no choir rehearsal Thursday night. Uh, Roxy's room will meet in Danko Hall on Saturday uh, at 4 p.m., and we have the regular lineup again next week with the Sunday schools, the youth group, and service. Jerry, you want to come on and tell them about the chili cookout? We want to invite you all out to our chili cook-off Wednesday night. Uh, we know we have some great uh, chili makers out there. So if you will, just bring a crock pot of chili. Uh, we're going to be giving prizes for the first, second, and third place. Uh, if you can't do chili, we also could use some desserts uh, or crackers, anything to go with the chili. We have a sign-up sheet out there in the foyer. If you will, just sign up. That way we can have an idea. But now if you get up Wednesday morning and you haven't signed up, you still want to bring something, you can still do that. But I just wanted to kind of have an idea of who might be able to bring what, okay? Thank you. Look forward to seeing you. And if you don't do chili, if you make a good soup, you can bring a good soup instead. Because I know we've got some people who make wonderful soups. I won't call Judy's name or anything. Uh, and we'd like to remind you that on January the 11th, I believe it is, will be Inquirer's class. That is Saturday, isn't it? January or 10th? January 10th uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, in Danko Hall. Uh, again, Scotty's still looking for uh, someone who can play acoustic electric guitar if any of you are interested uh, and have those skills, uh, you're far better than I am. So uh, uh, talk with Scotty or someone in the choir and let them know. Carrie can probably talk with you today if you need. Um, Midweek uh, praise and worship will resume again on January 7th. Uh, and our pastor is doing a new series called The Seasons of Life. And his introductory uh, session will be about understanding the seasons of life. Now, on Sunday, January 11th, so that does mean Saturday was the 10th, uh, we're having the baptismal service because that is baptism of our Lord's Sunday. And uh, so Pastor J.R. wanted to uh, have a baptismal service. So any of you that are interested in being baptized or rebaptized, uh, contact me in the office uh, so I can put your name on the list. Uh, and if you would, I need to know by the 8th. If you can let me know sooner, that's great. But uh, by the 8th, I think that's a Thursday, if uh, you can let me know, that would be great. Uh, Let's see, the Lighthouse uh, is currently doing a special session on Desmond Tutu's book, God Has a Dream. Uh, Judy can talk with you a little bit about that if you want to see her, uh, but I understand it's an outstanding uh, book and some really great information in there, and it's generating a lot of discussion from what I hear. Um, Glenn's reading room will not, hear me, will not be meeting on January 10th and 24th. Uh, they're changing the way they determine when they will meet. It will still be on the second and fourth Saturday, but they are deciding to pick a book and then announce when the next session will begin, what second Saturday and what fourth Saturday. But that's coming out in our newsletter that will be out on January 4th 
it'll explain all of that. Judy's written it up and has given it to me for us to include in the newsletter. So you'll see more about that. So there will not be January Glenn's Reading Room. Uh, and I already mentioned Roxy's Room that we'll be meeting on the 3rd. Uh, they also meet on the 17th. They meet the 1st and 3rd. Uh, the one on the 3rd is in Danko Hall. The one that's on the 17th is usually at John and Roxy's house, but they will let you know uh, as time gets near to that. Uh, on our Covenants Upper Room Prayer, uh, this week's praises was a great Christmas Eve candlelight service. If you missed it, you missed a real treat. It was uh, very touching and very enjoyable. Also, Jim Ball's mother is home from the hospital and doing better, uh, improving. Uh, I don't see Billy and uh, Frank here, but if any of you are still interested or interested and have not signed up yet for the Cornbread Festival, uh, which is uh, going to be April 25th in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, uh, there's still 14 seats left. So, uh, and it's, it's a cost of $52, but when you sign up, you'll need only half of that to sign up, and then the remainder would be due on April 5th. So I think it'll be an extremely enjoyable time uh, of fun and fellowship with other people here. Uh, and the board and the staff and all our ministry leaders want to wish everyone a happy new year. We want you to be safe but we want you to have an enjoyable new year. Uh, also, Synergy is resuming back again this week uh, or this next Sunday. So please uh, uh, let everyone know that it will uh, be resuming next Sunday morning. Uh, our board member on duty uh, is Eric Webb and uh, James Roberts. They're back here at the back. Our deacon on duty is Deacon Ron Collins, who's back in the back. Uh, and there is no children's church today. Uh, let's see. And giving thanks today, we would like uh, to say our deacons, thanks to our deacon staff for, for, for providing us uh, with a safe and alternative opportunity for our New Year's celebration where we'll have food and fellowship and a midnight communion service and also our ministry leaders for providing opportunities for our spiritual growth and fellowship together throughout the year i think they've done a wonderful job of providing different outlets for us and different ways of learning uh, in our spiritual journey uh, birthdays today we have valerie Barron is on the 30th uh, tammy webb uh, is she here? Yeah, what, 63? Four, okay. On the 30th, uh, Todd Field's birthday is January 1st. Uh, Roxanne Miller is January 1st. And Tim Key, 12, I think, uh, on January 2nd. And Betty Barker on January 3rd. Uh, let's... Give them all a hand. Uh, let us rise and greet one another in peace.
and stand as you're able as we sing together our processional hymn, How Great Our Joy. Christ, who has made us all brothers and sisters by his love and grace. Join me in praying our prayer of invocation. Loving God, on this Holy Family Sunday, we are your people. We praise you and give you thanks for the Advent reminder of your gift of peace, hope, joy, and love. Be especially present this morning in our worship time and lift us up that we might feel and acknowledge your presence, not just today, but also in our daily lives, in the coming new year as well. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lit me of the Christ candle. Last Sunday we lit the Advent candle. On this Holy Family Sunday, the first Sunday after Christmas, we light the Christ candle separately for the last time. The lighting of the Christ candle on this day is to lift, is to remind us of the light of a star that led the Magi to the Christ child, and to also remind us to lift our hearts to praise in Him today. Let it do likewise for us in 2015. We light the Christ candle, praying that the light of Christ will be with us throughout the new year dawning in 2015.
because each one of you brought it. It's here because you're here and you bring God with you. Everyone in this room and the sound of my voice and every child of God has God's presence. So we know God is here. We know God is listening. We know God loves us. God invites our prayers and every prayer in our heart, whether spoken or unspoken, whether in the prayer book or not yet in the book, is important to God. But there are many unspoken prayers in our hearts. So if you have a prayer in your heart that you want us to include that's not in the book, that we may not know about, please signify by raising your hand. We have some special needs. Carrie's going to come and stand in for Scotty, who's in the hospital. So we'll anoint him. We have a lot of Thanksgivings. Joe was mentioning Tracy's mother is doing better. We have a lot of people who have a lot of Thanksgivings from Christmas and the holidays. We have some people whose holidays might not have been that great. So we remember all those, and God knows about all those as well. As we begin, my brother, I anoint you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As you stand in for Scotty, we pray, knowing that God is in the hospital room with Scotty or in the emergency room, we know God that made the God made him, God knows what's going on, and we know God is there. So we just pray that the Spirit will so fill Scotty's heart and mind that he will feel God's presence. That healing can begin even before the doctors begin, because God has already been there. So we just pray God's healing on Scotty not only physically, but emotionally, spiritually, whatever he may need, we pray that God will heal him. We pray for all those unspoken prayers that were lifted, those that are in the book and those that are unspoken in people's hearts. We know God knows what they are. We know God is able to heal. God is able to provide because he has the resources of heaven, more grace, more blessings, more peace than we could ever even dream of. We lift up all those in our congregation who may not be here, who are traveling. We lift them up for travel mercies. We lift up all those who are troubled in body or spirit. Our local community, the state, the world, its leaders, places of unrest, we lift those areas up. And the church, not just this church, but God's church around the world. We lift up all those needs and all those prayers, and we join them because we all have the same God and Father who will answer every prayer. If all these things are in God's will, we say amen.
Old Testament reading is from the book of Psalms, 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him. All his angels, praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You, anim you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creature and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens, and he has raised us up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Rise in spirit and stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel this Holy Sunday, Holy Family Sunday is from Luke chapter 2, verses 22, 25 through 38. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. <clears throat> it has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your, serv <clears throat> dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed him and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that in the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will, will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phamel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there and fasting and praying day and night. And that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to who all were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the word of God.
Thank you, choir. And all of you would be choir members or shower singers and all of that. Uh, it's a perfect song, and I think many of us uh, have really enjoyed that particular hymn for many years. Uh, it, it really goes well with the sermon that I'm about to preach. But one thing I want to do before we go any further that I failed to do earlier is uh, if there's anyone new here, welcome. We're glad you're here. And here at Covenant, we're proud to say that no matter who you are, where, are, where you are on life's journey, or who you love, you're welcome in this place. And be sure when they send around the attendance sheets to sign in and give us all your pertinent information so that we might better serve your spiritual needs. Now, I need a prayer from every one of you. <laughs> I haven't done this in about six years. Uh, at Covenant, I did preach uh, last year, I think, over at Woodlawn for the first time in several years. Uh, and I would have guessed it would have probably been another five or six if Pastor J.R. Uh, staff, preaching staff, had not all abandoned us on this last Sunday. <laughs> now, there is Brother Darrell over here who can preach. Of course, he's on the organ. And, you know, Pastor J.R. is just very fond of our music department. And he knows that music will cover a multitude of sins. <laughs> so I think that's why he left him over there, so that he could help cover the multitude that's coming at you. So I uh, really appreciate the fact that you're here today. Uh, Pastor J.R. will be back in the pulpit next week. Uh, but in any case, it's my joy and pleasure to be back here and bring you this final Sunday morning message of hope in the year 2014. This is Holy Family Sunday, uh, and we've been through the four Sundays of Advent, of peace, hope, joy, and love. And we did the Christmas Eve service, where we were anticipating and celebrating the coming birth of Christ. And now baby Jesus has arrived and it's time for celebrating his presence. In our Old Testament scripture, David spoke about all creation praising God. And in our gospel reading, both Simeon and Anna were praising God for being given the gift of meeting the Messiah in their old age, which had been pro pro prophesied over 600 years prior. Uh, and praising God is what my sermon is about. Uh, and I've entitled this sermon, Who's Emptying Your Cup? But bring your feet up on the bench, because I might step on a few toes in here today. <laughs> Would you pray with me, please? Loving and wonderful God, we ask that you open all our hearts and minds as we examine our own thoughts, ideas, and efforts in praising you. Too often we allow the turmoil and frustrations we encounter in our daily lives to overshadow all of the wonderful and exciting things that you bring to us. As we begin to look at each of our personal journeys through this message, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I'd like to start this discussion with a couple of questions. Now first, we've all heard the different personalities face their lives with their cup or glass half full, or their cup or glass half empty. Now with all the honesty you can muster and a show of hands, let me see how many of you are cup half full people. Okay, now let's see the real honest people. <laughs> Who are the cup half empty people? Okay, now for both you half cup people and half empty people, I just want to know who emptied your cup? 
Why is it not full? Was it the loss of a relationship? Are you saddled with a bad job? Or is there some unsurmountable or insurmountable dispute that you're having with a loved one? Or some other bad circumstance in your life? Oftentimes, we tend to blame others for what's going on in our lives or for circumstances that give, put the perception in our minds that our cup is half full or half empty. Well, it's my contention that God not only fills our cups, but fills them to overflowing. And we are the ones who are emptying those cups. During my career, I had the opportunity to hear this motivational speaker, uh, which had a tremendous impact on my life and my spiritual journey. His key point was focused primarily on positive thinking, positive attitudes, and positive responses, which strongly, could strongly or would strongly impact our lives. For example, he said that when we're asked first thing in the morning or during the day how we are, and we just respond okay, then our day is just going to be okay. However, if we respond with, I'm doing wonderful, or I'm doing great, that's the way our day will go. Well, I decided to take this man up on his suggestion. And I began doing this very same thing. And sure enough, I noticed that it was working. But it wasn't just working for me. It was working for those people that I would encounter throughout my day. It would lift their day. Now, that wasn't enough for me. Believing that our spiritual journeys should respond in the same way, I began changing my response. I changed it to, I'm doing great. God has allowed me to wake up one more day and enjoy the beauty of his creation and the miracles that lay ahead. This, exp this response, or this response to the question, created a very positive experience for me, and I noticed it too, was affecting a lot of the people around me there in my job. I didn't realize how many spiritual people really existed in my office at that time, but it began to lift them up and help them. I believe that if we wake up every morning praising God and recognizing the wonderful things God has, is, and will be doing in our lives, we will begin to experience a positive change in our lives. We'll begin to experience a positive change in our spirits and our outlook when it comes to the view of our cup, and for that matter, of the greater world. Too often, we let one event darken our whole world to the point that nothing is right. Think about it. It's like that old adage, you can do a million things right and no one remembers. Do one thing wrong and no one forgets. Unfortunately, we live our lives exactly the same way. We let one bad thing happen to us and we forget about all of the wonderful things God has done for us, and we focus only on the pain and hurt that we're experiencing at the moment, and either blame God for it, or we feel like God has abandoned us. But I assure you, God did not cause it, nor did God abandon you. Just think about David in the Old Testament. Even though David committed adultery, he murdered, he did numerous other sins, he was still the apple of God's eye. And so are we. God loves us all. Now, David provided one of the most powerful passages of Scripture that stood out for me in my life, and it's Psalm 23. 
And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is such a powerful piece, uh, and I do believe that David, even though he had done all of these different things in his life, he still believed that God was with him and caring, with, caring him and was with him throughout various pieces of his life. And this is such a powerful piece for me. I believe I can see pieces of these lines in my life throughout my spiritual journey when I look back on it carefully. And I would venture to wager that if each of us took stock in our lives, as David has done in this passage, we would also find that our cup is not half empty or just half full, but our cup is full and it runneth over. You see, God does not cause bad things to happen to us, nor does God leave us during our times of hardship and pain but is there walking through it with us. I challenge each of you to look back on your life experiences, both good and bad, and make a list of the positive and negatives. I'm sure you'll find that the positives far exceed the negatives. Not only that, but I believe that if we look back on any of those events, any of those bad events, we will not only find that God was walking with us through the bad, but we will also find that God provides something good out of it that strengthens us or better prepares us for what's planned for us in the future. That certainly has been true in my life, and I'm going to walk through a little bit of things that have occurred in my life that has brought me to where I am today. Now first, when I was a child in the Southern Baptist denomination, and I praised God for them, even though they told me I was going to hell for, and for things I, who I was and things I said, uh, in bi vacation Bible school, they taught me that Jesus loved me. And that one thing has stayed with me and sustained me until I found a church who would accept me just as I am. And no, you Southern Baptists, we're not going to stand up and sing 84 verses of just as I am until someone feels guilty enough to come up and accept Christ. Okay? <clears throat> Been through that, done that. Now, later in my life as a youth, still a Southern Baptist, and mind you that they believed in the literal translation of the Bible. Well, when I asked why we believed that drinking was a sin when Jesus drank wine, my answer was a good one. It was, it really wasn't wine. Hmm. Wonder what happened to that literal translation. Well, that response did three things for me, brought out three very important things to me. Number one, not every pastor, not every priest, not every preacher has all the right answers. It takes you and those preachers and God to figure out what the right answers are. And second, not any one single denomination is the one that's going to heaven and the rest are going to hell. We're all God's people and we will be there together. And last, but certainly not least, and the greatest help in shaping my life and spiritual journey was that I figured out that God and I were going to have to figure out the scriptures together. 
so that I could more fully understand what God needed for me in my spiritual journey to grow. Now next, as an adult, as a father, the loss of a child is the most devastating event that you'll ever encounter. Well, I lost my youngest son, Shane, in 1989, just days before he had turned 14. And he had just come to live with me that day, and we lost him in a tragic drowning accident. With God and the angels in my life, the support of family, friends, and co-workers, after about six months, I finally made it. through the roughest parts, but it's still hard even today. Shane was a child of nature, and with Shane's death, God did two miraculous things for me. First, God opened my eyes to the beauty of creation. I began to see and appreciate nature like never before. Now, a few years earlier, the movie The Color Purple had come out. And there's a line in that movie that I know they put in there, especially for me. It was when Suge and Miss Seeley were walking through the beautiful field of flowers, and Suge said to Miss Seeley, I believe God gets pissed off when you don't notice the color purple. <laughs> because as a result of Shane's death, I had begun to see beauty around me like never before, and the color purple became like a beacon in a lighthouse to me. No matter where I went, there was purple. There was purple, and it just stood out like a beacon for me. The second and most importantly, God taught me that there was nothing, and I mean nothing, that I could ever encounter that God could not get me through. I knew then, and I still know today, that God can get me through anything. And he can do that for you as well, if you just rely on him. The subsequent losses of my brother in 2002, my mother in 2007, and four months later, my dad in 2008, taught me some valuable lessons as well. I'm not going to go into those, but they all left special lessons on me. In 2009, God called me away from Covenant, the church that I dearly loved, uh, to only to be used somewhere else. Now where, at that time, I did not know. However, it took me to Woodlawn United Methodist Church, and I helped them rebuild that beautiful church that had burned. Actually, it's a new building. They didn't rebuild the same one, but it's still a lovely church that they have to worship in. Uh, when the church was finally rebuilt, God decided that I needed to go on a spiritual journey, a spiritual renewal journey. And of course, it brought me back here. This place is a place that has always renewed my spirit the music department, the fellowship, the love that's in this church just brought me back here to be fed and prepare me for what still lay ahead. Now coming back, I found my dearest and most spiritual friend, Deacon K. Dement, was going through her cancer diagnosis and treatment. And this was really emotionally hard for me to watch. Yet her strength and her willingness to fight was an inspiration to me. Then with the loss of my right kidney in 2011 and stage 4 diagnosis in 2012, I got to join her in that journey. Initially, it was hard, but Kay's strength gave me the added strength I needed to fight. With all this, I still praise God every day when I wake up and experience once again 
the beauty and miracles that are there waiting for me. And most recently, the loss of of Kay's partner, Gwen. They were partners for 32 years, and she had worked numerous years for Pastor J.R. And Pastor J.R. asked me if I would volunteer in the office so they could find a replacement. And I told him yes. Well, I became their replacement. <laughs> and who would have ever dreamed? You know, I, here I am, was a computer person all of my life, but now I'm doing a job that I enjoy more than anything, filling that office and around the Spirit of God every day. My friends, in both the good and the bad experiences in our life, I believe God is truly preparing us and leading us to fulfilling the master plan, even though we may not see it initially. I believe with my whole heart that God has a plan for us all. I know and I truly believe that Kay will will agree that God is with us in everything we do and would never allow us to do these hardships alone. We just need to keep our focus on God and remember all of the wonderful things that God has done and continues to do for us and that it's a part of that master plan. We're all here today because God still needs us. He's not through with us yet. We're still here because God still has work for each and every one of us in this sanctuary. I want to challenge each of you to take an honest look at all of the events in your life journey and see just as I have that even though we have encountered some pain and hardships in our lives, God has given us far more to be thankful for and that our cups are not half empty and they're not half full unless we see them that way with our own limited views. Let's begin opening those limiting views on the single events in our lives. We can do this by starting our days with a panoramic view of the world and praise God for the tremendously beautiful handiwork, not just in the world, but also within ourselves. You see... As you continue this, you'll see as you continue this daily process, you'll notice the changes in yourself as those, as well as those around you. Then wait and see what wondrous surprises God has in store for you in the new year. You will begin to see that your own cup is not as half empty or even just half full but God will fill it to overflowing. Amen. If you would, please rise. Let's start our praise right now and sing our declaration hymn. Let's just praise the Lord. Just pray. 
If you've not done so already, this is the time to pass around the sign-in tablets and sign in, and as Joe mentioned in his sermon, uh, if you're a visitor here, we welcome you uh, and uh, hope to see you again. Um, and I'll also mention that Joe gave a sermon that nobody else has given this year. He's the only one that's not poked fun at the treasurer. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, okay, on the next one, right? Um, I'd also like to remind you that your, do your donations to this church are tax deductible, and this is the last Sunday of 2014. <laughs> so, just saying. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what that means. Um, and I'd also like to tell you a little story about a $100 bill and a $1 bill. There was a $100 bill and a $1 bill, and they were at about at the end of their useful life, so they were going to the Federal Reserve to be recycled. And the $100 bill looked at the $1 bill and said, you know, I've lived a good life. I've been to the finest hotels, five-star restaurants, luxury travel all over the country. I've had a really good life. And the $1 bill looked at the $100 bill and said, yeah, I've been all over too, to a Baptist church, an Episcopal church, a Presbyterian <laughs> church, a Methodist church. And the $100 bill looked at the $1 bill and said, what's a church? <laughs> <laughs> Would the ushers come forward? <laughs>
Father, we thank you for these gifts and we thank you for this church. We thank you for blessing us with so many talented people to bring us the word. We ask that you make 2015 a bigger, brighter, and better covenant. Amen. On this Holy Family Sunday, let us prepare ourselves for receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion by saying together our general confession. Let us pray. Loving and merciful God, we confess that in this frustration in our lives, we often see our cups as half empty. Forgive us when we overlook the fullness of your love and grace and fail to give you the praise in Christ's name we pray amen we now pause for a moment to individually to confess to you almighty God those things which separate us from you others and the best in ourselves let us join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's love and forgiveness is always there for us. As we have, all we have to do is ask and receive it with an open heart. Therefore, know that God has heard your confessions and you are forgiven. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Join with me in the liturgy of the great thanksgiving. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It is a right, a good, and a joyful thing to always and everywhere give thanks to you, Creator God. Therefore, we join our voices with the angels and the whole host of heaven forever proclaiming your glory singing <laughs> night of his betrayal, Jesus was sharing a meal with his disciples. During the meal, he took bread and lifted it to heaven, giving thanks. He broke it, passed it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, for this is my body that will be given over for you. 
At the end of the meal, he took the cup of Elijah and lifting it to heaven and gave thanks, passed it to them and said, Take and drink, all of you. For this is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant that will be spilled for the forgiveness of sin of the one and of the many. Each time you eat from this bread or drink from this cup, do this in remembrance of me. You feel comfortable? Let us collectively ask for consecration. Loving God, I hold in my hand the wheat of the field and the fruit of the vine. I ask you to send your Holy Spirit among these common elements so that they become for us truly the body and blood of Jesus. Amen. Join me now in the proclaiming the mystery of our faith. Brothers and sisters, at Covenant Community Church, we hold an open communion. That means you don't have to be a member of this church or a member of any church or even a Christian. Just someone wanting, knowing there's something better out there. There's a higher God to lead us, to help us with our lives. That's, that's all we ask is that you come with a pure heart seeking the Lord. There will be an intercessor at the altar after the service is over if you need just one-on-one -on -one prayer. And remember, this is a reverent time. We don't know what other people are thinking or what other people are praying, so we need to be supportive and be reverent. The table has been made ready. The feast has been prepared. Come taste and see how good God is as the ushers direct. have heard the good news and have eaten at the table of blessing and hope, what will you do? We will fill our cup with God's peace, hope, joy, and love. Praise God. And how will you do this?
Thank you for bearing through it with me. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was a special pleasure to be able to share something that was very close to my heart. Now, in reverence to our pastor, raise your hands. <laughs> May, the Lord May the Lord watch between, watch between me, and thee me and thee while we're, while we're absent, one from the other. Amen. Look what the Lord. 